What's happening, Electric Fam? Welcome back to the channel. On this video, we are installing our new wheels on our DIY Bafang BBSHD 1000 watt motor custom build mountain bike. one or two rides one of the spokes broke and um, you know it was about $30 to fix at a, at a bike shop and you know it, it took them like half a day honestly I just don't want the maintenance and I don't want to have to um, keep fixing spokes whenever they um, whenever they break and I just don't want to really worry about it I have already installed the front and it wasn't you know, it just took a little, a little uh, fidgeting and tinkering with the bike. But this is the magnesium wheels from Amazon. So it's actually not too heavy. It's uh, both combined is like seven and a half pounds. It is heavier than the, you know, your traditional stock mountain bike wheels. But I just love the look. I, I think I'm just going to be taping the magnet sensor here. But we'll see. I'm hoping that the rear will fit just fine. Um, yeah, this wheel was about $185 on Amazon. Six to 10 speed uh, mag wheels. So just uh, feel free to look that up. But um, it has good reviews and um, it should be able to handle uh, trails. And I don't, I don't do hardcore mount mountain biking, so I think this would do just fine. And just look at that look. It's just, you know, I, I never want to be, uh, if, if I'm doing a custom wide DIY build, I might as well have custom wheels. So without further ado, let's get started installing this. This might be the more challenging part. So um, this is what I'll have documented today. Uh, first things first, remove the rear wheel. Uh, by the way, I like this bike so much that I'm willing to spend $180 on, on the wheels. And that's crazy. I just thought about it myself, that uh, wheels on a car is just about the same price. And then and you get four, four custom wheels. Whereas this, you just get two. But it is what it is. Uh, yep, mine has quick release. So that's great. Honestly, I really, I really hope that um, everything just fits fine. I hope. It's always good to have measurement. Oh, look at that! Look at that fit. That's a perfect fit. And I actually don't know the. I was kind of gambling. I don't really know um, the size of the rear or anything like that. I just um, hit the click button as soon as one of my spokes broke. I did not want to pay for any more spokes in the future. Looks like that fits fine. I'm, I'm looking at the the uh, rotors where it would go, the slot. So that looks like that fits just fine too. Now we just have to worry about the um, the cassette. So I hope that's fine, but okay, good. And let's work on the tube and the actual tires that we're gonna be using. So let's remove the cassette wheel here and uh, we do have a way to do that. Obviously, if you're gonna do this, make sure you have the tools beforehand. I, I mean, I think I have all the tools, but it's always good to just double check. I have a tool set here. Let's see. Okay, got that. The lock key. I have 
chain whip tool. Now this was handy for our other uh, Super 72 installation that we had. It would be great to have help on this part, but it's just us. Uh, I forgot what I used. I used a big ass wrench before. So undo this lock wheel. And I don't I actually don't know how I'm gonna do this by myself. Once the lock key is off, just remove the cassette. And we're gonna be using pretty much just replacing that same pattern. So I believe it's a 12 spline. And um yeah, this is this is filthy. But just look for the if we can oh, there's a spacer here. Okay. I mean looks flush enough. So let's lock let's place the lock key back in there. And then tighten I believe 40 newton meters. Do a hand tighten first. Normally these are my editing video hours around uh, 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. But let's work on this today. All right, and just make sure that it spins the way it should. Okay, so far so good. I think I could have gotten better tubes, but these were supposed to be just spares. And we'll, we'll, do, we'll do this for now. All right. I got just a cheap Schrader, Schrader valve. And uh, plug the Schrader valve in the hole. There's really just one. Can't really go wrong with installing these. I'm just gonna pop this guy in there so that it just uh, keep that in place. Uh, let's pump it up a little bit actually. Yeah, we're supposed to pump it up a little bit, but not too much. Now, you don't wanna over, over um, pump, not when you still need to install the, uh, the, the actual tire. So I just kind of just did two pumps for now. Replacement tire, okay, here, we got some Schwinn from Amazon. I specifically wanted thinner tires, so I got a 26 by 1.95. The original ones were so much more thicker. I mean, they handled fine, but I wanted to try something different. Every tread's different, but mainly the way it works is the arrows that point that way, that should be going forward. And you kind of just slide this in, honestly. Slide it in and grip it in. If, um, I don't really know how to describe it, but it just kind of seats in place. So just get, get a few in, and then everything will follow suit and just keep rotating. And uh, if it's too tight in one spot, then um, my suggestion is release some air. I think you could also use the, uh, like the little levers to kind of um, push everything in place. Okay, there we go. All right, there she is. That's our rear, rear wheel magnesium mag wheel setup. For this setup, we need to have the star hex kind. I, I don't really, I don't even know what, what to call it, but I had it here somewhere. You could see how dirty this, uh, this tire is, because uh, I took it to Mountain Bike uh, Fullerton Loop Trail, which is super fun. This is a 2013 bike, and if one spoke cost me thirty dollars, 
like, can you imagine how many spokes I would need to fix over time? So I said, no thanks. And then uh, I shopped for the wheels. Wheels came in. And now we're just uh, improvising here to get it installed. And uh, my main worry is this, really, just the speed sensor. It's just a magnet, so I think I'm, I might just tape a magnet to one of the one of the newer spokes, the three spokes that I have. What I like about these two is actually um, with the smaller tires, it's about an inch shorter. And that's good because that's gonna make my bike shorter. And I need, I need the shortest I can get because I'm a short person. And my mountain bike is like a medium size. Okay, let's install the rotors. This is definitely a, an aesthetic thing. Well, not only an aesthetic thing, it's really just the maintenance thing too. I don't wanna have to worry about sp those spokes and having them true all the time. Truing them is not a good, it's not a fun thing. I'm sure mountain bikers hate that. I think the wheels, um, really play a big factor in bikes or even just in cars in general this is like one of the first thing that i would change if i can if, if i could change it like on the on the fat bikes that we have like the super 73s or the aerial rider if they had custom 20 uh custom 20 by four wheels i would definitely go for that but I just don't see any right now. Wow, oh, are we done? I think that I think that's it. I think we're pretty much done. Okay, so let's try plugging this guy in. I made sure I was at the first cog, first gear. So lift this guy up. I haven't done this enough to to remember how to do this, but just line everything up in place, then seat it. Okay, well, that popped right in. That's good. Don't forget the springs. Tighten the quick release. But let's just check out our chain line. It looks like it's very straight on the ninth gear. Uh, I'm gonna hope that I have a better offset, but just inspecting everything. Hand tied in the calipers. It's actually not bad. Now the last piece, honestly, is the magnet part. I still don't, I still don't really know how I'm going to do the magnet part. We are pumped. Look how nice that is. All right, folks, comment below how you guys would solve this problem. Our speed sensor is there. And um, we actually have an idea of trying magnet. Where did it go? Okay. We had a magnet and a washer laying around. And we're gonna use electrical tape and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> let's turn on the, uh, let's turn on our uh, system here. So this, this blinks red when a magnet passes by. Like, like that. So, 
just making sure we have everything lined up. Okay. This seems to work. So I added a couple of washers. And uh, just to make it a little thicker, a couple of washers. Well, three washers in total. And then tape. Tape always goes a long way in DIY projects. But we're gonna just secure the tape. I think think we got a solution for now. But now, now we gotta make sure that not only our tape is holding up our sensor, are bolted. So I had to move the sensor a bit further out. That way, we can reach the the magnet that's in the spokes that are deeper set. Okay, that's not going anywhere. I'll probably add one more zip tie here. But I think we got ourselves a make do for now. Yeah, you can't really tell that this magnet there. I mean, you can, I guess you can tell if he's looking for it, but that's it, guys. That's my DIY custom wheels, three, three spoke mag wheel setup. Definitely different. And um, yeah, definitely my style. Maintenance free. Don't have to worry about any more spokes maintenance. Well, guys, thank you for tuning in. Kindly like and subscribe for more content. If you want additional discounts on aerial riders or the Bafang setup, check out the useful links in the description below. And see you guys next time.